Good evening and welcome to Real Talk with myself, Anelim Joda. So Oprah Winfrey once said, I've always believed that death shows up to remind us to live more fully. And now I know that for sure. On the 28th of April, we all, especially in the TV industry, reeled with shock at the news that Akumzi Jezile, Chobani Mselani, Siasanga Kobisi, Kumbuzo Mbutuma, and Masesi Vilemina had all passed away in a horrific car accident in the Eastern Cape. Tributes have been pouring in as friends and family comfort each other and try to make sense of it all. Unexpected goodbyes can never be easy. And on the show today, we pay tribute to the five young lives lost as friends, colleagues, and mentors to the deceased. Remember them fondly. They may have ascended to the heavens, but here in studio, an angelic voice will start today's show with her song, God Will Make A Way. We all remember the voice that season 11 idols gave us. Rana of Matema Moremi will be chatting to her after this. So I have good plans for you. They plans to help you prosper. And not plans to make you perish. Just trust in me, I'll make your way. I don't ever count your mistakes. I forgive you for all your sins. I am the great I am. Just trust in me, I'll make your way. He says, even in my darkest shame, Lord, you were still my light. The way, the truth, the life. I trust you will make your way. He will make your way. He says, Come on. I trust you will make a way. 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 The Lord says, He says, I love you even when you fall. My love for you will never fail you. His love for you will never fail you. Just trust He has made way. He says, Wait patiently in my presence. Be still and know I am your God. I'm never let you down. Just trust I have made a way. He says, even in your darkest sense, it doesn't matter. God, I am still your light. The way, the truth, the life. Just trust I have made a way. Even in your darkest, deepest sins, God, He is still your light. The way, the truth, the light. Yeah, I trust. I trust you will make a I trust you will make a Their plans to help you prosper, not plans to make you perish. Just believe He has made a way. He says, 
even in your darkest sins, I still shine so bright. I'm the way, the truth, the life. Just believe I have made a way. We'll have a sit down with my Dema after the break. This is Real Talk on SABC3. The stage is yours. And welcome back. So it's safe to say she's still got the voice. I mean, come now. Did you hear that performance by Madema? She performed a song titled God Will Make A Way and indeed he always will. It's just been over two years since Madema shot to stardom as the runner up on Idol South Africa in 2015. In her own words, she's been fighting for a place in the South African music space since for the fear of fading out like other contestants that do in all music shows that we know. Now she's back and celebrated the release of her album titled Love, Praise, Worship. And I just want to throw in there that Ukeli produced it herself, okay? Okay, and if that wasn't a thing, under her own label. Hey. <laughs> I just feel like you are more than a singer at this point. You are, <laughs> and I, I said this on Twitter, you're just quietly building your own empire. I'm, I'm, I'm really after the success. Nah. So it takes a while. Forget the fame. I'm after the success. That's ah. why it's taking forever. But I mean, so w when I look at your story, I, I think of three big stages that then bring you here. Mm. One, you were five at church. Mm -hmm. The other one, you were 10 years old and you weren't really invited to sing. <laughs> you just jumped right on and said, <laughs> I'm just going to put my voice in this. Yep. And then obviously, you know, as, as, as the runner up, do, do you agree that those are the three defining moments of music for you? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want to hear the hijacking stage. Not really proud of, but it worked. Yeah. So and people can use it. And also, <laughs> you're like, I was 10. I was you know, cute. I was like, they were like, oh, she's so cute. Well, not so cute. I look like a boy. So I don't know about <laughs> the cute part. But, <laughs> but I think that the music was like, I'm a little bit of a little who is she? So the and big voice has always been you. Oh, thank you for that. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Yeah. And <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it has always been. I started singing at a very, very young age i can say young yeah. but um professionally yeah. idols was was definitely was, the one was the one so yeah. what's the fear that you'll fade away when you've got the proof that you don't necessarily have to win the reality competitions to be the one who is successful i mean we're just saying shikana kyle deutsch you know what i'm yeah. saying yeah. you don't and I, I know it's a knock because we want to win let's not act like you I know mean. I, come on <laughs> it's a knock because i wanted to win but yeah. did you really fear that you'd fade away um Honestly? Yeah. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, we're talking to someone who entered Idol three times. Yeah. This is someone who knew what she had inside of her. Yeah. And I think it's very important for people to really, really believe in themselves that much. Yeah. If you believe in yourself that much, a simple no won't turn you down. Yeah. A simple you can't sing won't put you away. Yeah. And um, with people like my pastor, Pastor Sibui, who would, I mean, you got this. Yeah. Let's yeah. pray about it. You know, let's fast about it. You know, mm. um, People like my sister who would mm. say, she can't sing, ne? but she's like, sing in front of me. I'll tell you <laughs> if it's good or not. <laughs> I'm like your sister, though. I cannot carry a note to save my life. But you, but you have an ear, right? I have an ear. And I'm that's just important. Like, we, we can yeah. work with you. We can work with you. Yeah, yeah. Bimbalo, I, 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 like, look, <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? So people like those that were like, go, go. Go try yeah. it. So I, I really, I did not have the fear. Mm. Um, but I did try and find possibilities and ways to try avoid it yes, um, and yes. when i went independent it was a big deal for me but i had to do my research i had to find the right people to work with yeah. um i had to pray about it again because yeah, it was yeah. a big step yeah. um but um you know eventually it, it worked out and it wasn't easy but it was worth yeah. it when you say i had to do my research i was pleasantly surprised shocked uh, you know a little jealous <laughs> When I, when, when I was um, watching an interview with you and you say that after the competition, every interview you would do, you would sing and then you would use it as focus groups and ask your fans on social media, do you like that song? And then that helps you decide what Which sound genre? you are going to do. Yes. Well, the thing is, you know, coming from such a huge competition as that, yeah. um, I did tracks like, I remember you, you loved Tina Turner. I loved. And, Rupert you know, you were like, ooh, Mother that dress, <laughs> you know. Um, but I still had people who loved I Can't Give Up Now. They're yeah. like, this girl is anointed. Yeah. And um, 
but knowing me i'm like na i know ke pholoshitsweng ke tshaba i love gospel music mm. i love it but i'm blessed with you know this gift of versatility to do mm. other genres mm. and i can't just throw them away and mm. be you know the next big benjamin dube yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> You know, I was like, no, man, let me let me stick to what I do. And as long as I don't fade away from who I really am, yeah. th that's all I care about. So I use those platforms to try and test the water, as yeah. they would say. Yeah. And I would get good responses. I'm like, yeah. I'm using that. I'm taking it. And then I, I did my, my live recording. Were your fans the most surprised when you did a song with Kira, Cleo? <laughs> they <laughs> like loved it. it. They like, yeah. loved it. She was going, like, like, yeah, she's she's going to it. come. <laughs> They were like, yes, she did it. And some were like, no, she can't. We, we, don't, we don't see her in a babes or do more suits. Yeah, you know, she, yeah. Nah, she can't. So when I did a song with Benjamin Dewey, they were mm. like, you're on the right track. But like I said, it's not like I was singing about anything controversial. Yeah, I was singing about yeah. happiness. I was singing about love. And on the Dira song, I was singing about I've conquered it. Yes. I was talking about the competition. Yeah. So you're, you're, you and your friend, you're starting to write exams. And you are concerned that you have to go to this competition because you, you need to enter it. And your friend is like, Chomi. <laughs> your friend is like, Chomi, Chomi, forget you. about this competition. <laughs> we are, we need to, let's, let's just get our start. degrees. <laughs> <laughs> let's study. And you're like, hey, Chomi, it's burning in me. And this is why you, you, you were that successful, right? What is burning in you as much as that feeling when you are about to go into, into the competition? What's burning now? What, what's dying to get out of you? I really want people to hear my story um, through my music. And yeah. um, it's a like I was doing a song now, um, mm, God beautiful. Will Make Your Way. And I wrote this guy 2014. I was at Sepo Gav. We were at Oko Studio. And I was going through the most. I was like, God, why isn't anything working out for me? You know? Yeah. And that song came up. And um, so that's my story. And I believe that there's someone else saying, sing at home, going, but Matema, it's not working out for me too. Yeah. And that's a song for you. You know, yeah. God will make your way because he knows why, why he has to do it for you. Um, and songs like Gilerado. Yeah. I just want people to celebrate love. Let's live it, you know, yeah. and love what we can. So I'm really, I have this burning desire for people to hear my music and, and hear my sound. And, and I really want to inspire people through my music yeah. and have fun and let people yeah. laugh love each other and celebrate and live through the music state theater <laughs> one woman show wow that's another risk i <laughs> took <laughs> right <laughs> right because the thing about having to sell tickets Yo. is that you could come out and perform to the seats mm. you know mm. you, and you know at the state theater when, the se when there's no one sitting in the seats it falls up most <laughs> and, <laughs> and all you see is black it's right so so oh man were well, you not having nightmares about that <laughs> you're you fresh off a competition we don't really know you we love you mm -hmm. but you know south africans we'll move on like this onto the next season onto yes. the next person onto the next song yeah yeah that's another one nah. and i get to say the risk and then let's just start there yeah. i i'm one girl i I want to do it, let it break me. Yeah. I don't want to think, would it work out? Ah. I want to do it, I want to fail, I want to learn, I want to grow, then I'll do it again mm. until I get it right. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to do my own show. My and team was like, you're crazy. You want to fill up state theater? So when I tell a circle of idols, I'm like, yes. But you know how many people, uh, yes. Yeah. Like, you don't even have the sponsor. I'm like, don't worry. Fine. I got you don't this. have your own songs. You don't have your own songs. <laughs> what are you going to sing? Like, I got this. And then we went through it. Yes, I prayed about it. Yeah. That's the one <laughs> yeah. That's the one thing I always make sure I do. I prayed. I was like, God, I'm about to do something. You you know you're a God who doesn't embarrass. Yeah. Don't embarrass me. Yeah. And he didn't. It it filled up. They came through. They loved it. It was magic. Um, I took them through like a, a, a small onion a memory lane, you know, and, and they enjoyed it. Yeah. And people fell in love with me more. And yeah. then I told them, Hey, guess what? I'm gonna do songs. That mm. are written. Mm. Tell me what you think. They love them. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna put them on my album. <laughs> How do you not believe when you are listening to a story like this? <laughs> uh, we've got more with my tema after this. <laughs>
record label? <laughs> what does that mean? Something, what, what does having your own record label mean? So uh, immediately when you make it to top 16 of the competition, they, yeah. they give you um, uh, yes, a, a deal. Yes, a deal, yeah. Yes. And um, so when I, when, I, 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 when I lost, yeah. I wanted to take another risk, uh, like I said. Lady of risk. <laughs> yeah. And I wanted to go independent. Uh. I sat down with DJ Cleo, and um, he told me the bad and the good of, of what I'm about to do. Yeah. And I was like, nah, it's I, I feel like it. Let me do it. And also because then it means you own yourself. Yes. Yeah. Everything. Like when you see me on real talk, you know that Madama probably got it for herself. Yes. When you see me performing, you're like, she yeah. and that I, I, I become so proud of it because I'm like, yay, I did it yeah. myself. <laughs> did you know how to produce before you produced your own album or did you Google it <laughs> no. two at night? Um, how no. do you produce your own album? No, I, I really, Tepo Gawi helps me all the time. Yeah. He's a very close friend of mine who, who also does um, produce. So he taught me yeah. um, from 2013, um, 14. So he taught me. And then right now he was um, helping me produce this album. Mm. Mm. No, it's beautiful. You are fan made and you're self made and you brought that together and this is what we have. So mm. lots of voice notes coming through. People want to ask you questions about the industry. Roll it. Good evening, guys. My name is Sipiwe from Soweto. Yo, Matema, Matema. She's just an inspiration, this girl. Um, you know, I want advice, Nick, because um, I'm a lyricist and a vocalist. I want to know how do you get into being vocalist for other artists that are big that you want them, um, that you want mentoring from, actually. So I would like to get an answer from her and advice as to how to go about. Because I also tried idols. I, truly speaking, I've just um, given up on that. So um, how do I get into being a backup singer for someone? Maybe I can go from there. Because, I mean, shame, the best person to have asked us actually was Donald, because he was Zonka's backup singer, mm -hmm. and then he made it solo. So uh, do you use vo a backup vocalist? Currently, no. Even um, on live shows? So I pre-record my stuff. Okay. And then, uh, can I say I prefer it that way? You can. Um, yeah, I, I prefer it that way. Logistically, I'm not, financially, I'm not ready for, yes, for that as well. Yes. Um, Cause so it's, it's livelihood. Yes. Because you want them to be your backup vocalist. You know, I don't Therefore, you must be, be able to pay them yeah. a salary. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, not yet. Mm. Um, but in terms of mentorship, for instance, when I when I called Benjamin, I I called Benjamin. Mm. I think you need to take that much risk. Yeah. Um, find out who their manager is. Find out who they work with. Yeah. Who's the closest person you can get to? Give them a call. Uh, send them a demo, yeah. do anything to make sure that they hear you. Yeah. Because honestly, they, they can't just hear you. Yeah. So you need to um, get your stuff on, on Twitter, yeah. ask people to retweet until it gets to them. You know how the stuff yeah, works until yeah. you, yeah. It's 2018, there's no door that's closed. Yes, it, yeah. you, you'll get there. So that's how. So when we fill up, uh, you know, Orlando Stadium or when we mm -hmm. fill up, you know, F&B Stadium, that's when you bring, because you, you, You'll do it, but oh. I just don't want you to be on stage alone. I feel I like <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need for you to to have people around you. I received them. Oh, okay, so <laughs> when she does those big shows at the yes. stadium, yes, you know, then she'll be looking at, at backup vocalists. Yes. So of people course. don't know that you are pretty much SABC three family. I mean, you, the song "The Stage Is Yours." The stage is yours. She sang it. <laughs> uh, you did trending SA's original. Uh, this is my day. It was me as well. That was you as well. And yeah. you did Mzansi for sure something. Mzansi for sure. She's, <laughs> she's ours. I'm she, SABC. She's SABC. <laughs> she's SABC3. She belongs oh, to us. Man. All right. I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Honestly, I won't lie. I'm so grateful. Uh -huh. I mean, every time, I, I, like, I rush for advertisements. <laughs> you're I'm like, like, I want to hear that. Stop talking, Annie. I, mean, I want to hear the stage. Yeah. You know? I'm like, oh. One day you should sing it, because you say it a lot. You should be like, you're watching SABC3. The stage is yours. You should do that. No. Yeah, you we will. Won't. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> no, we won't, we won't be doing that. We want people to keep watching SABC3. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want them they to love you. <laughs> so, um, your album, released in December? Yes, 1st December. 1st December, which was a smart move because then Christmas presents and, I you mean... know, there you are. What was your anxiety about the album? Because I know... People wanted you to do jazz and hip hop and, and pop and, mm. and gospel, because mm. I mean, you are the gospel. Yeah. What was your anxiety about your album coming out? Sure. 
I wanna that that's where I had a bit of a, a fear yana on that one yeah. because I did not market it so well, mm. by the way. Um and besides yo get gospel, like eighty percent get gospel. I was like, yo, are they really gonna love it? Mm. And then I realized that people just love me. Yes. And that's important. You know, yes. when people love you, they support you yeah. and what you do. Yeah. And I was like, it's it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. And it did work out. I wanted to reach mm. as many people as it possibly can. Yeah. And now it's finally go musica stores because that was another thing. Hey, these things take forever. It takes forever, but when it's when it comes together, you know, when it it's finally makes really sense. It's really all worth yeah. it. It's really all worth I, it. I believe in God's timing. Yeah. Um, I mean for someone who who has had a lot of rejections. Um, who has had a lot of, no, you're not ready yet. Yeah. You know, I believe in, in God's timing. Did you ever think that maybe you can't sing the amount of no's you've heard? No. In there? Hey, now it's a confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me in trouble sometimes, I must say, but, oh, man. Ish. Rather if you too much confidence. Yeah. Rather too much than always having to be talked into yourself. Be because you know, you know what you... So things are said to you, yeah. and I believe that it doesn't matter what they say. Yeah. Until you say it, it won't come to pass. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there are a lot of times where God tells us you are this, you are that, and you always deny it in your head yeah. because you look at the situation currently. Mm, mm. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not that girl. I speak things into existence. I believe that the universe is always, the birds are listening. The, mm. the, the walls are listening. They're taking, mm. they're feeding off what you tell them. Mm. So with me, I'm like, if they tell me, you know, I'm like, something better is coming. Mm. You tell me, no, now you'll see me. And guess what? They do. They mm. always end up seeing me there. Mm. Yeah. So just quickly before I say thank you to you and then we stand by for your other performance. You're going to wrap the show up for us. Thank you. Um, I heard you say your sister's child is one of your biggest fans. Oh, right? it's Spunky. It's Spunky. She's your, <laughs> one of your biggest fans. Yeah. So I had to mention her because I know she's watching. <laughs> so, you know, outside of her, who would you say A, shocked you and surprised you that they were a fan of yours? Yo. Bonang Mateva? Really? The Queen Bee? Yeah. Really? Yes. yes. I mean, when I told her that I, I have I have this show coming up, she was like, yeah. send me clips. Yeah. I want to see. Um, there was a photo I posted, and people were like, you look like I saw it. I sent her those comments. Yeah. She's like, yeah, I saw girl, you were slaying. Okay. Um, I love that. My mother, yeah. I'm shocked she's a fan, because yeah. she wasn't really into keen. it. Yeah, my mother. Look, okay. mm -hmm. now she is. <laughs> and now so are we. Matema, thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you thank soar you. to greater and greater heights. And we'll come as well when you're filling up those stadiums. Appreciate it. I'll thank you so it. much to our guest, Matema. Siasanga Macheke, Kovisi. Joined the legendary gospel group Joyous Celebration in 2009 and is best known for her songs Noyana and Hai Inyeba. She was also an actress and, started in, and starred in shows like Zabalaza and The River. Here are some of the messages especially for her. When I first heard of Siasanga's passing, I immediately tried to imagine her lifeless. Um, no voice, no breath, no dancing, no jumping around, no jokes. It was such an impossible task to achieve because she has always been so jubilant, so alive, so excited to live. And one thing that stuck out for me was the fact that she embraced everyone. She loved everyone equally. But she looked at everyone with the same eye and the heart of God. Yes, I cannot believe that I'm paying tribute to Sia Sanga. Uma Jeke, Um Twemboki, Ndombazana Yakukomani, Embumakoloni. But Usia Sanga was full of wisdom. She loved the Lord. She loved the family. She loved the nephew, Um Nombo. Um, in joyous celebration, she was a blessing. So I called Antine and I was saying, "Auntie, I'm going to say something. I'm going to my sister, my best friend, my confidant, my I don't know, my everything. Um, I learned a lot from Mrs. Sanga. She really taught me how to be a better person. She taught me how to love better. She taught me how to live better. My cheque pumla mda sekai pumla tatuetu pumla non pumla." I love you and I'll never forget you. Thousand degree So we just want to say to the family Garcia Sanga Kobese Utiko is still alive, Unani, we are yas in Mego in. Sia Sanga came to join us some years back. I remember auditioning her in Doyamba. She came and she sang. We had to put her on stage same day. That's how good she was. Her voice is commanding. It's in Dana Parat and Perfumer. 
my choma akumbula choma condolences to the family may your soul rest in peace it's hard it's hard to believe but to get as kicked in chanani or In studio now, we have the co-founder of Joyous Celebration, Babule Nenani Mkise, as well as Bonga Percy Vilagazi, close friends uh, to our Kumzi Jezile. Guys, what a knock, right? Yeah. And, and uh, Babule Nenani, I mean, I'm not saying you are old. <laughs> I'm saying you are older than us. Oh, Therefore, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, you've lost a lot more people than us along the way, right? Mm. Because that's life. Mm. But you have to sit and say, this is not fair. No, not at all. Ne? Uh, thank God I was raised by a praying mother. Oh. And I was actually praying and asking, Unkulungul, no, no, not this time. Why? Yeah. Why? Uh, people are talking about signs and, and, and anything, this, but we need to know what's the answer, what's going on. Mm. Why Akumzi? But I, then while I was asking myself, I realized that, you know what, perhaps we need fresh, new, energetic, vibrant angels up there. Ah. And that's what I tell, I'm telling myself these days, that how I'm consoling myself, that we've got a fresh, new angel up there. Because if anything, Percy, he was definitely an angel on Earth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thoroughly, thoroughly. I mean, <clears throat> we were just talking with, with a group of friends, a society, the group that he created, um, that he was just the life of every occasion mm. um, and and I think we 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 are just worried about how we will go on because mm. he would always come up with those weird comments with the with the very insulting and upsetting and disrespectful <laughs> words so and and he he influenced us so much that that I think in all of us there's a bit of him mm. there are phrases that we use that he started so it's, it's a massive blow it's a massive blow and you know, on, now on the group that you're talking about, this WhatsApp group, the society, after, after he passed away, are, are you guys scared to... Because obviously there's a hesitance of, you know, this was his thing. Yeah. Yes, he brought us together, but as Teta Mox, Teta a team. Nolazi, yesterday at the memorial service, um, said that um, we, we're always planning something. We're always planning something, a getaway, yeah. um, a weekend getaway, and fighting about the the money that needs to be the paid logistics. or the yeah the sleeping arrangements yeah. because there was the first question that comes would ask what are the sleeping arrangements <laughs> <laughs> um so so for the first time we we were we were planning mm. his memorial service because mm. his friends put the memorial service together oh. the entire thing was put together mm. by the friends uh, with uh, the acting chairman uh, <laughs> <laughs> we threatened him a lot so for the first time we were we were talking about his Memorial service yeah. and funeral. Mm. It felt so weird. It felt yeah. so. It still feels weird. Yeah. We were just saying with, with uh, a, f a friend in Olaz, which it, it just it feels unreal. Yeah. Mm. Babylon, there's so many videos of Akumzi at every joy celebration. Oh yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. front <laughs> with sure. with his trusted cap, you know, singing along. And <laughs> I almost get the feeling he wishes he could sing well enough to oh, be in joy oh, celebration. Oh, he did. I'm telling you, every time I was like in the car with him, I would stop him. Let, let, let's listen to the song. <laughs> <laughs> because he will be like singing on top of his voice and he will think he's on point <laughs> when he knows very well that he's actually not on point. But <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no, he really wished. He was an extended or, or an outside member <laughs> of joy celebration. There was no show without him. And he will follow us even when we are traveling. Yes. You see, I mean, uh, Thank God he was at uh, Carnival City when we did Carnival City. But yeah. Sun City, he never missed Sun City because for him, it was kind of a reunion. Mm. That's where he first encountered your celebration when I actually invited him to come over to the Sun City show. And between him and Musa, they've been diehards ever since. They've never actually looked back. Uh, yeah. I think we actually we have a video of him in a car with you and oh, Kelly wow. singing. Can oh. we please play that video <laughs> just to show you that the man couldn't sing, but he was gonna <laughs> sing. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Because what we're saying about him not being able to sing, <laughs> it's there. Because you can hear everyone else. Is, and I mean, Kelly's holding the other. I read a letter that he wrote to his younger self, right? And I think mm. he wrote it for Drum Magazine, I'm not sure. And he says, you know, don't worry about your husky voice. Because um, mm. I, 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 as a kid, he hated the fact mm. that he had a husky mm. voice. Mm. Don't worry about mm. your husky voice. Trust me, it will work for mm. you one day, right? Yeah. And I mean, it did. Oh yes. What other, as as you know, as as his mentor, as his good man, what other things you know were you guiding mm. him through? I, I, I must. One of the things that really we actually clicked on, yeah, was when the very first time, and I thought I was kind of discouraging him. I was not sure if he was going to understand this. Yeah. When I told him that if you want to have a long life, or if you want to sustain yourself within the entertainment industry. Sometimes you don't have to be in the front. Yeah. Be behind, be where things are happening. And it, it was like, it was a challenge in a way. Mm. Because every year after that, I could see him like growing, making mm. his way uh, mm. on that side of things. I mean, if you look at the fact that mm. he was only 29 years, mm. but within the space, you say, he has been in, in front of the camera, he's been mm. behind the camera, he's been a producer, he's been mm. a director. And very and, good at all and, of oh, it. Oh, and mm. awesome at that. And yeah. uh, he's, he's, he's very good at consulting. Yeah. He's very good. He will call you and ask you, I'm doing this thing tomorrow, so what do you think? And young people are not like that these days. And uh, one thing I was telling people that they can learn from Akumzi is actually the importance of the journey. Yeah. Uh, young people these days, they feel they will do something now and tomorrow they want to reach the destination. Yeah. He, the time that he spent working on his craft, growing his craft, yeah. uh, the duration, he, he didn't rush to be whatever where he was. When, when he passed on. That's why when he won that award, we all believed that he deserved it. And there he was, Zwisa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. <laughs> 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 Snack, lunch, midnight snack. Firstly, you being a writer that you are, obviously mm. they need to consult you as well, like mm. Bob Lindley was saying, as he is moving away from being in front <laughs> to go behind. You guys mm. are friends, you're a writer. I mean, yeah. you're one of the best writers the country has. Mm -hmm. You know, how were you guys consulting each other about your careers? Akumzi, the one thing that I learned from him, and, and he, he was um, slightly younger than me, mm. he would never relax. He was never relaxed. He was always searching for more. Mm. And when you're around him, because he was achieving so much, yeah. you'd feel compelled, you know, you'd feel pressured. Mm. To, to also achieve. Um, I mean, I remember this one time he sent me, um, he sent me an email that he was about to send to, uh, to his management oh. and asked me to check it for him. And I checked Consulting. the email, yes. Mm -hmm. And I checked the email for him and I missed one spelling error. Yo. And he didn't <laughs> let me hear the end of it. <laughs> he said an entire writer, you write for an entire show, but you cannot spell. <laughs> and and th that was just the person that he was, man. Um, he always wanted to know more. Just w he was never relaxed. I've mm. never seen Akumzi relaxed unless he 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 taken the decision to actually chill and and mm. take things slowly. But he was always searching for more, yeah, all yeah. the time. Mm. Uh, Lani, I understand you are going to be the Mpati Obo, the the program director. No. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing at the funeral? I'm, I'm a behind the scenes person. I'm, oh, so you you, you are it, running everything from behind. Run everything from okay. behind. I, I must say, oh, Akumzi had this way of making everyone close to him yeah. believe that he's his best friend. Yes. And <laughs> I'm working with a group of guys who are so passionate in making sure that 
he gets the best send, send off. off. Mm -hmm. So I've never seen celebrities, I've never seen young people going all out mm. to make sure. Yesterday uh, we had a, a memorial service yeah. for him and it, I must, mm -hmm. I, I really can say that it was really in a way yeah. one of the best because mm -hmm. the guys, they are really giving it all, they yeah. are giving their hearts, they want to make sure. So it really makes what I'm supposed to do. I'm just a prefect, <laughs> hey, checking, <laughs> hey, <laughs> ticking ah. the dots because he had that ability to really make everyone believe that yeah. he's close to his heart, yeah. he's the best thing that ever happened to him. I don't know how he did that. He just made you feel like you were the only person in the room, like oh, you were yes. special and oh, he, yes. you, he loves you and all. Mm. Listen, if, if, if the funeral is going to be anything like this chat that we've just had, then <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful center. And I think his family really deserve it because yeah, oh, yeah. He, was, oh, yeah. he was their light, you know? Yeah. He was their center. He was our center. Yeah, oh, yeah. So thank you so much for coming to share on him. Thank you, oh, Bob yeah. Lili. Thank you so much, Percy. Thank you. For he you. grew up in front of all of us, one of the energetic child mm. presenters on Yo! TV's Big Breakfast, who made you feel like you were hanging out with one of your own friends from school, man. Yeah. When you get to a certain age, Anissa wins a matakila shorts, needs a weight class, to 29 years of living. Shang -shang. In order to have 29 more years, needs a song. Smile at you. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> <laughs> and water. Smile Follow my water. Anyway. Yes. This is the most healthiest thing. Yeah, now I can have cake. Welcome back. A couple of years ago, after presenting and even directing, we saw him acting on SABC One's Tempe Pushes, for which he won the coveted Golden Hall. Uh, now we're here with Noloaz Ngubeni. Now wait, Akumzi has been to the show before, and when he came here, he made sure to remind us all of something. We found the video. Here we go. Push, man, but I know you. I know you, Yeah, he's got stories. Welcome, SAFTA Award winner. Yes. <laughs> TV presenter and director, Akunzi Chesile. You're waiting for the SAFTA I head. I was waiting for it. I was like, better say it. Say it, I need to say it. <laughs> SAFTA <laughs> Award winning presenter. <laughs> so now, Tayman, <clears throat> how did you guys become friends? I hear there's a story about social media and the DMs, <laughs> and you are selling yourself. Tell us. Uh, Wow, um, it's so funny because I used to watch Akumzi and Musa mm. on your TV back in the day, and somehow I was convinced that I'm also going to be a presenter of your TV when I grow up. <laughs> I don't know at what age. You made it look like <laughs> you could all do it, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, and also the chemistry they had and the fun. Like, I think every teenager wanted to be like them. Mm. And I went on Facebook, and um, I've sent them both uh, messages asking them to be my friends, if not just to mentor me. <laughs> and and uh, Musa didn't respond. And then Akumzi responded and said, don't worry, you'll make it. Oh. And I think it was 2007. And then after I finished my studies and I got a role on Skimsam, mm. we somehow met for the very first time. And before I could even go to him, he came to me and greeted me, said, yo, I, I watched you on Skimsam. And I told him that I've once sent him a message and I wanted to be mm. friends with them. And he said I was lying. And then we went on Facebook and checked the DMs. <laughs> like we scrolled up until we found the DM and then he saw it and we laughed about it. He even showed it to Musa. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I want to reply when I'm not yeah, yeah, reply. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, <laughs> what, that's, what, that's what he said. It's like, yeah, I mean, I always reply to people. Musa, you're such a, <laughs> I can't even use the word he used, but he said you, <laughs> we non so and so and. <laughs> Then, yeah. Leslie, what was yeah. your first interaction with him? He was interviewing me on your TV, um, oh. actually, um, himself and Musa. So then during one of the ad breaks, we were having a conversation about um, second names, embarrassing second names. And I was like, I have the most horrible one. <laughs> I've never met another person with my second name. And he asked me what the name was, and I told him. And then come after the ad break, he says it on live television. <laughs> 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 Yeah, embarrassing me in front of the nation. Um, <laughs> so that's how we met. And then Akumzi is like one of those people who he meets you once, and the next time he sees you, you're like practically friends. Yeah. Yeah. So then the relationship just grew from then onwards and then became like, like brother and sister, yeah. really. Yeah. Kevin, what are you going to miss most about it? Jeez, uh, um, everything. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no word 
that that can best describe Akumzi. Yeah. I think he was he was a lot of things to so many people, mm. but I'll definitely miss his presence because we've spent so much time together. Mm. We have spent so so much time together. Akumzi is one person who would just rock up at my place without announcing that he's coming, mm. and then he'll call at the gate and say, "Come out, we're going." He used to do activations for this other brand uh, on weekends, mm. and he would just literally force me to get into the car and go with him. So I will miss um, the road trips as well. We had lots and lots of road trips together. I hear this. I, I, I struggle to understand when the man worked, because every time <laughs> I look, he's in a car with some Kelly and Lovu, and they're drinking out of a Pringles yeah. tin. Then I look again, and then he's with Kelly. Then I look yeah. again, and then he's with you. Yeah, yeah but here's the thingy. Um, some of the road trips, actually, um, they were for work. For work. Because if they say there's whatever the summers in Devon, he'll say, no, we're not flying. Let's just take a nice road trip so that we can enjoy each other's mm -hmm. company. Like, he enjoyed road trips than, than um, having to take a flight. And, jeez, <laughs> on, on Friday, when they were driving to the Eastern Cape, because he had invited a couple of us to drive with him to the Eastern Cape, and unfortunately, I couldn't go because I had a trip to Limpopo. Mm. And on their way, um, he called me because we were organizing. I had Percy earlier on mentioning that we used to organize um, a lot of events. And, you know, uh, they had already booked a place where we we're supposed to go next week. Mm. And he called me about that uh, particular event. And he said to me, um, I'm going to make sure that every single member of the society is going to be there. Don't worry. Leave everything to me. Mm. And we spoke for so long. And then at the end of the call, he just said to me, um, and that was the last thing he said to me on that Friday. And I said to him, I'll call you tomorrow, tomorrow. That's when I got the call. You know, but he really liked road trips. Mm. It's so sad that it's the one thing he loved, that's the one thing that ultimately, yeah. Yeah. you know, ended it all. But we can all just be like, well, it's what he wanted to do. Because I know he was supposed to fly. Yeah. He wasn't supposed to be yeah, on that road trip. Yeah. So yeah, many times. he yeah. was supposed to fly, and then he decided, no, it's fine. Well, you know, it's five of us. Let's make it nice, and let's all go down. Yeah. And now we've lost, you know, all those lives. How did you find out that he passed away? Um, I got a call from a friend. Yeah. I was actually at a family wedding. I got a call from a friend. I was like, no, 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 it can't be. They'd be very fine. And then I called Percy. And Percy said, look, my friend, he was very diplomatic about it. Mm -hmm. Look, it hasn't really been confirmed. So, you know what I mean? You know, trying to, to really ease me into it because he knew where I was and what was happening. So immediately afterwards, I just had to block it. I had to take it, stash it somewhere. I don't know where in my heart or in my mind. Mm -hmm and continue with the responsibilities I had at that time. Mm. But you know, when, when you're continuing with life, but there's this thing yeah. at the back of your mind. So even during, I'm texting Musa, I'm calling Musa, I'm sp mm. uh, speaking to another friend of ours, I'm like, guys, yes. you know, what is happening? What is happening? To the point where my husband was like, switch off that phone. You are going to drive yourself insane. And then the phone calls kept coming in. Now I'm not answering my calls because I can see, okay, this is obviously true. It's so I, I just, I don't know. I don't know how I got through that day. All I know is that I did. You know, it's one of the most difficult things you can experience in your life, mm. being close to someone and then out of nowhere, hearing that they're gone and you really never see them again. I don't even think, I don't even think I've really processed or accepted it. it I see it happening around me, mm -hmm. but it almost feels like, I'm watching it, like yeah, yeah like it's happening on a, on a television yeah. screen yeah. somewhere. And it's also because you was in entertainment, you also think like yeah. the credits are gonna roll yeah. anytime now, yeah. and it's not gonna be the truth. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I know I'm not gonna see him again, but I don't think, I don't think my heart has accepted it. So um, in the car accident, uh, five of them were in the car, and five of them passed away. Uh, thank you so much, to all the family and friends. We know we're a bit invasive. But we really wanted to make the show special. And Tabani's friends, thank you for your messages. Here they are. When we speak of Tabani Mseleni, we talk about somebody I called a friend, very, very close friend and dear to my heart. Somebody was selfless in the person that he was, genuine to the core, loved his craft, loved being an actor, loved directing, loved the arts with all of his heart. And even though sometimes the journey was not easy, Tabani was somebody that never gave up. His spirit was relentless, he was a happy soul, and he wanted everybody around him to be happy. Mdasa, you're no longer around. I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss the crazy voice notes, 
the words of encouragement and just the person you are. Love and light to you from the heavens and I will miss you dearly. To them, Seleni family, condolences and may we allow his soul to rest in peace. Love you, Mdasi. Rafilo. Taya and Labour team to hear about his sudden and very tragic passing and we would like to offer our sincerest condolences to his family and his friends. We will really miss his wonderful sense of humour, his warm energy and his relentless passion for the art of acting. Chomam ininsi into ininsi into hainde tuli tobani it's me your friend your sister, your colleague, Zimkita Kumba. Uh, we met 2015. I knew the minute you said you're not going to climb that horse during training unless you have something to eat first. I knew right there and then that you were my friend. We're going to be buddies and we're going to be lit. I hope I'm not speaking out of place here, but I think that this tragedy has pretty much taught us as people, as a country, to A, live in the moment, live to the fullest, and to be the best sister, brother, lover, friend, father, mother that you can be to the next person. So thank you so much for this hour. It was indeed touching. Akumzi Jezile will be buried tomorrow. The funeral is at Rema Bible Church in Randburg. Siasanga's memorial service will take place on Tuesday, the 8th of May at the Newtown Music Fa uh, Factory in Baseline. Tomani's friends and family will gather at the Market Theatre in Joburg on Wednesday, the 9th of May, to pay tribute to him, and both will be laid to rest in the Eastern Cape. Thank you so much to all my guests for joining us. We will see you on Monday. Good night.